probably most people would know me as being uh, the executive director of the Irrigation Association for the past few years, and that's kind of what have you done for me lately. People earlier in my career would remember the blue stripe hose because that's my memorial that is all over the country. They wouldn't know that I did it, but they would know that uh, blue stripe hose. Family businesses, while difficult some days, are very rewarding and the opportunity for Sue and I to work together, to have our sons join us in the business, and to continue the business and to sort of grow an extended family of employees uh, has been a, a very rewarding uh, experience. So, very, very happy with the way life's turned out. I want the, the future irrigators to understand that the past and the present drives what they do in the future. And that includes water quality, how it's applied, and uh, the fact that they're going to have to deal with water as, uh, shall we say, an emergency device to deliver nutrients and health to turf grass, plants, trees, whatever it might be. An interesting event took place. The L.R. Nelson Company in Peoria, Illinois, was, was experimenting with a uh, traveling sprinkler, and that happened to run some tests on a farm some 10 miles or so away from our business, and so we got to watch their experience. The thing worked well. It used a 3-inch by 660-foot hose, and they supply the hose in the middle of the field and loop it back both ways so the distance of travel is two times the length of the hose, and in that case, that's a quarter mile. There's a saying that goes something like this, in order to know where you're going, you need to know where you came from. And the future irrigators uh, should know the history of irrigation and how it started and how it began, because it's fascinating, number one. Number two is, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it's all in our era. And I think they have to know the trials and tribulations that the pioneers went through to establish where we are today. And we're still in a, um, uh, you know, just in its infancy. Uh, what's the most important innovation in irrigation in the last 50 years? Unquestionably center pivots and there's now 28 million acres of center pivot irrigated ground and, and, and drip micro and all the other things come along at about, except for surface of course, come along at three or four or five million. So that's the single most important, not usually believed by people in California, but that's the single most important irrigation development in the last 50 years, maybe the whole century. The reason I would do it over again is because I have a lot of fond memories. I've made wonderful friends through the years. I've watched uh, technology grow. I've seen a lot of changes. And I've, I've been able to uh, work in education and uh, information. I've worked with the Irrigation Association. I've been one of the founders of ASIC, and it's just been a, a very nice road all the way. The next generation of irrigation people need to realize that there have been tremendous changes that have been made in the industry and there's probably as many changes that will happen in their generation as happened in our generation. And yet if you look at uh, all advances that have been made, you say, well, 
how can possibly be more advances made? But you know, I think about such things as uh, pivot irrigation, micro irrigation. These have all come about uh, during the time I've been working in the industry. My first experience with irrigation had to uh, do with moving uh, irrigation pipe from my uncle uh, when I was in high school in the mid-50s. Mid um, and then after I went to college and I got a job with the Agricultural Research Service, we were doing some research on uh, irrigation and, and runoff and erosion and we had some experience there. And so that's how I really got going in it. 